Both cores are just absolutely melting. Which one's gonna go down first? I think this is gonna be respect the gooses. Oh my goodness. Ring. Oh my goodness, the ring. Jaina just blowing up everybody here. That's a four making five. And it does nothing. not fall up. What a play. Oh my god, somebody please clip that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday, right? Last time I said the wrong day. Taco Thursday. Taco Thursday, indeed, here on the old Mongoose stream. Uh, I just got the lobby invite, Taco, so our timing is pretty darn good. I love timing. I, I, I also need a lobby invite. Wait, is it the one from Duck, or did you get a direct invite? I got a direct invite uh, because what? I know peeps, and I'm finding your name and sending it to you as well. I, there you go. Yeah. So, Taco, um, we yeah. got a big Thursday, man. It is the Thursday of the last week of the regular season before NGS playoffs. Ooh, hey, my first set of playoffs, too. And it'll be good. They're always a lot of fun. I'm going to post up our Division B East standings on the old stream here. And uh, make uh, if you are not familiar, uh, our two teams here. Uh, let me make sure that is. No, son of a biscuit. It did it again. I need oh, to, no. It's showing um, C something or other, but I'll, I'll switch it real quick. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. <laughs> I uh, So while you're doing that, I'm super excited. So while it is Taco Thursday, that really means it's Taco Tuesday because every day is Taco Tuesday in my house. Right. So, uh, But these this first set of uh, playoffs for me, because this is my first season casting well, and doing anything with NGS, I'm actually looking at maybe trying to go back to where uh, – travel a little bit so I can have some good internet and try to cast some of the playoffs if I get that opportunity. So that'll – that, that's how hype NGS playoffs are. Well, it is hype. So now that I have the correct standings up there, uh, our two teams, uh, Duraton's Couch, sitting in seventh place out of eight needed to start the playoffs. This will be their last game of the season. They have not clinched yet, Taco, even though they are sitting in a playoff spot. And their opponent, Die for Vision, this will be their last game of the season. They are sitting at ninth place. If they win today... They will get into the playoffs. If they lose this game, they will not make the playoffs. So if if they win, they they for sure clinch. For or sure does clinch. Somebody else? Now okay. disclaimer: this is my own caster math, so no guarantee on accuracy. But according to the mongoose mm -hmm. math, if Die for Vision wins today, they will make the playoffs. If they lose today, they will absolutely not make the playoffs. Duraton's couch can get in either way, but they are very much on the bubble and need the points as well. So, Bugan, Bugan, Bugan squad, they've already played this week. They have already played. They have 12 matches completed already. So, that is their complete season. Oh, okay. So, they are dependent on. So, Phoenix Rising can't, even if they went out, just right. to make sure I understand this properly. And Die House for Vision, Chez, they need House two of... points because Bugan squad has the tiebreak. So, Die for Vision cannot tie do Bugan squad. They actually need to pass them. Okay, and Duratan's couch will stay at 60. So if Die for Vision wins or wins out, either way, um, then 
because if, if Die for Vision wins, they get two points, right? If they win out, they get three. Correct. Uh, Either so one will get Dur- them in because they'll pass so the Boogman Squad. So then Duratan's, Duratan's couch will be reliant on House of Chez. Who losing. I believe are also playing tonight. It's all going down tonight, Taco. Who has the tiebreaker between Duratan and House of Chess? That is an excellent question that I don't know the answer to because that right there was the limit of my preparation for this evening. Oh, just actually, enough I, hype to build up. I actually I can answer this. I can answer there this you go. because Duratan's couch is fourteen games won. If I remember how the tiebreaker works properly, Duratan's couch is fourteen games won. House of Chess has ten. So even if House of Chess wins out, or so if the, House of Chess wins, they, they'll they only go up to 12 games won, which means they lose out to Duratin's 14, so correct? The, the tiebreaker is first points, right? Points are the standings. So if the mm-hmm. teams have the same number of points, the first tiebreaker is who won when they played. Okay. That's it. Who won when they played? Because it's, a, it's, a, it's round-robin scheduling. Everybody has played ah. everybody else. So when the two teams are tied, the tiebreaker is who won the match. It gets complicated when you have multiple teams with the same number of points. Then you get into kind of some weird scenarios. But, Taco, I've given out the R, and we are into game number one draft on Infernal Shrines. Yeah, and uh, so Infernal Shrines is really fun. Do you remember which weather effect Infernal Shrines is because of this stupid crap? (laughs) Um, Because of the ever-exciting weather conditions that now exist in the Nexus, I believe... I want to say it's... It's... Stealth. I want to say it's rain. Stealth? I don't know. Chat, Fog? help us out. Chat, help us out. What is the weather I, condition on shrines? And I could Ec- be a good co-caster and pull up the patch notes. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, Ector saying House <laughs> of Shea does have the um, tiebreaker over Duritan's couch that so makes it easier for them to catch, or House of Chez. All okay, right. so all they have to do is win on a Duritan's couch. Duritan's block. couch winning will lock them in, too. So a win for either team will lock them into the playoffs. Duratin's couch can still get in if they lose, but it'll get dicey for them. Now, with the scoring, what does 2-1 give you a point? If you lose a 2-1, you gain one point oh, in the loss. Okay. If you win 2-1, you get two points. If you win 2-0, you get three points. Snow flurries on Infernal Shrines, that is the shield. There you go. All right, so let's actually talk about the draft so far. So uh, first pick to Duratin's couch means this is Die for Vision's choice of map. Die for Vision banned out tanks, choking out the tanks, getting rid of the top two in the meta right now, and ETC a Johanna. Duratin's couch responding with a Rainer and a Zul ban, and then first picking the Kael'thas. Die for Vision responding with a Bruiser Sonia and uh, Old Man Deckard in the support slot. Uh, actor reminded me, I did forget how to spell fog. Fog is not S-N-O-W. Snow is stealth. No, yes, yeah, snow, snow, snow is snow shield. Is shield. I, would snow try. Is shield. I said it right. Snow is shield. That is correct. Actor coming in here with the, uh, with the du- second guessing myself. Um, I'm, I like, I like the Deckard pick. Sonia's, Sonia obviously really good clear on Infernal Shrines. Uh, Deckard with the has really good area control, and I expect to see rubies out of Deckard because of how involved this objective is, especially with Sonia being out there in the middle. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like it'll buy a lot of time, and there's some decent burst out of Kael'thas, and depending on how Cassia builds, uh, those rubies will be really instrumental in uh, supplementing heals between Q cooldowns. Yeah, and good good volume damage for Duratin's Couch. Kael'thas is a volume damage dealer, puts out a lot of damage. Cassia, kind of the same right now. She's real, very much in the Assassin meta right now, puts out a lot of damage, and a good shrine clear by both sides. Sonya clears out the shrine monkeys really well, as does Kael'thas. The garage ban... So no Garrosh, um, no Stukov. Yeah, the Garrosh band's interesting here. Uh, Garrosh is definitely a popular tank, and especially because Joanna and ETC have both been banned out, and Malganis is not playable right now. So that's three of, of the really strong tanks. I believe Garrosh is third in popularity, though, well, and not for just this that, season. But uh, Garrosh, a little bit of a soft counter to the Diablo, who loves running forward, and if you run forward into a Garrosh, you can get Victory. thrown back. There we the go. That that finishes answering my question. And now so, we have Die for Vision with their playoff chances on the line coming out with the double support Uther. So question, is this going to be Uther tank 
or are they still drafting a tank taco? Um, I it's got to be an Uther tank. If if they're going for the stun bot Uther with the Deckard, I don't think they have the follow up damage to to take another tank. So I think this is yeah I think this is going to be really heavy heals onto an Uther tank. Yeah, and if, they're going to have to bring some burst damage. Totally agree. If they were to pick a tank here, I don't think they have the damage to ever at any point kill Diablo, basically. But, oh, and there's the Kerrigan. All right. So, but they also don't have to kill Diablo. This is a very, very objective-oriented map. Now, Kael'thas is kind of, will kind of come compete with the clear of Sonya and Sylvanas. Kerrigan bringing in a lot of that extra damage will, will I think Die for Vision has the better shrine right now. But if if they just played the macro and the objective, I don't think Die for Vision has to go for kills, which so and I think I like their draft better right now. Um now I know the playoffs are high stakes and all, but Ector letting me know that there's actually a side bet but going on between these two teams as to which team can play the most unique hero. So forget about the playoffs. The stakes Just are really the side bet, right? The si it's all about the side bet. Forget the playoffs. It's all about the side bet, especially because it's just for pride, apparently. So Ooh. pride on the line. Which team can bust out the most unique heroes over the course of the season? So we could see some pretty spicy stuff here. Um, well, the spicy stuff is always the best stuff. Uh, granted, I'm a wuss when it comes to spice, despite being <laughs> taco. I like savory, not spicy. So, um, <laughs> but uh, spice is always fun, especially when we're getting to the end. Oh, hey, I'm back on camera, so you're you about are. to see me get up. <laughs> Too late. Um, it already happened. We we're like, bye, taco. <laughs> see ya. I was turning on the light. Um, so, but that brings a lot of variety, and that's really fun for casting. And so, hopefully, we go to three games so we can see thirty different heroes. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I mean, if these teams are really taking their side bets seriously, you can't pick the oh. same hero twice the whole set, right? That's that's what's happening. Absolutely right. And you can't pick a hero the other teams played because we're talking like of course, unique. yeah. So basically, unique, these heroes unique. are banned. That's what we're saying. It's all of the heroes uh -huh. in this game are banned for games two and three, of course. All right, well, I am stuck on the loading screen, apparently. Are you also stuck on the loading screen? It's because um, Cassia it's probably, oh, it's has taken a minute Gohan. to get in here. Come on, Gohan. Go, Gohan done, go, done go home. What the heck? All right, so I just got a notification that four items on my Steam on my Steam wishlist are on sale, and there's only four or five items on my Steam wishlist. They're all on sale, Taco. <laughs> Right? Um, I'm going to have to check that out, but not right now. <laughs> but right. I, it was worth sharing. We are officially into game number one, Duraton's Couch, minus Gohan, apparently. We'll see if they hit the pause button. Um, and Dive for Vision, the blue team, Captain Wedge, on Team DC dc <laughs> <laughs> Team Duraton's couch has DC'd. We might need to remake. All right, so we'll uh, put a kibosh on those inter uh, introductions momentarily. And we'll go back to uh, our beautiful, beautiful mugs to show the people. Right. So um, while we're waiting, we, we have the drafts at least that we can look at. Um, do you have a particular... Do you have an opinion on the draft? Do you think one team drafted better than the other? Like, Well, one of the things that concerns me, and one of the reasons I don't particularly like playing against a Kael'thas is, um, you know, everyone knows the living bomb teams pass it around like a hot potato, right? But what doesn't get talked about a lot is even if you don't pass the bomb around, if your team is good about not passing it around and they're good with the positioning, you're still dividing up your mental energy to make sure you don't pass it around. So even if you don't pass it around, it's mm -hmm. actually still disruptive to what you're doing. So, and it's disengaged time where you're not being productive as well as distracted. Absolutely. And uh, Die for Vision is definitely a little bit melee heavy. Uh, the Uther, the Kerrigan, the Sonya, I bleep Sonya, question mark. Um, so, well, is there any other way? I depends on who you ask, I suppose. <laughs> All right. They think they're good. So that's my concern, is how much value a Kael'thas is going to get into this grouped heavy melee team. 
Um, on the flip side of that, uh, Uther is really good about clearing out uh, burst burst damage. So we'll see how it rolls. All right. Yeah. Both teams are. Oh, do I? Oh, why? Why did you make me want? Why? Because why? you're the re <laughs> no. I don't want to be a referee. I got it. That requires me to do stuff. All right. Here we go. Let me bring the game back up so the beautiful people can see. The stupid snow. Yeah. All right. So in the blue trunk, Sturaton's couch. If I'm not mistaken, Taco, the longest standing NGS team been here since season one. Captain Wedge oh, wow. on Diablo. Big egg roll on the Kalthos. Ace on Ana. Goku on the Imperius. And our joiner from Disconnect and Lad, Gohan, on the Cassia. Well, for a die for vision in the red trunks with the black stripe, we have Dark and Black on Sylvanas, Michael or Mikael on Kerrigan, Shamhat on Deckard, Kane, Blinded Sleeping on Floating, Sulfide on whoever that is, Sonya, and Atlas on Deck Kane. Now, I'm going to say, Taco, Sulfide on Sonya, he was beaten into the wall, stunned and body blocked for what felt like 87 minutes. And he Just didn't now, die. Yeah. That was a lot of healing. <laughs> Yeah, it was a long time that I couldn't see what his name was to <laughs> tell. <laughs> and still at three quarters health, just goes up to the top lane to fight with Imperius. There's a lot of self sustain up here, especially with if Imperius plays it right, which this is be this is Bravo Division, so there's no reason for him not to play it right. So and Sonya back up to full health, which is why there was no healing necessary. Sure. Uh, so this is going to be a very interesting top lane with the back and forth, and we have a one three one for uh, Duraton's couch. We did have one three one out of Die for Vision, but Mikael, which I'm pretty sure is the correct pronunciation, went up to the camp and then tagged with the rest of his team. So. Yeah, both teams getting the mid lane uh, siege camps and uh, making sure they're soaking at the same time. They kind of have Cassia in their sights here. Combo from Michael misses. Gohan able to dodge it, get back into the safety of his fort. Both teams securing the camps, and it looks like Viz Die for Vision will be moving up here to clear out the mid lane. Yeah, we do get a uh, brawly brawl up in the top lane, 1v1. Both both heroes looking really low. We get some hearts sprayed onto the ground. Uh, but it looks like Sonya coming out on top with that. Imperius not able to get the self-healing that he wants while enemy minions are around. But a great stab onto Sonya while nothing else is happening on the map except for first blood that I talked over. Yeah, I, I really liked uh, what Die for Vision did there. They rotated down for the gank. Now, last time they tried to get Cassia, she was able to kind of juke the Cassia, the uh, Kerrigan combo. This time, Michael just waited for Uther to walk right up and smack her to set up the combo. So no dodging the Uther point and click stun and first blood to Die for Vision. So uh, we... You go. We don't know what the altar is yet, uh, but it is about to spawn. We're about... Just over 10 seconds out, and uh, I mean, Frozen Frozen Punisher is kind of the best right now with the way towers are working, but with as early as it is, granted they do have a Sylvanas um, on one side, it is Molten, which is probably the best option right now, because the Frozen Punisher first just gets wasted. So uh, Cassia not here, she's forced to clear out the bottom lane, despite that Duraton's couch is willing to brawl. Um, and I think that might have been a little bit of a mistake as those blue health bars are dropping fast, Taco. Big egg roll running for his life. Captain Wedge the same. Goku backing up as well. Die for Vision running onto the Goku. He is able to uh, get himself to safety. But uh, a little bit of a retreat there for Duraton's couch and the monkeys going over to Die for Vision. Yeah, uh, Big Egg Roll definitely experiencing the troubles of having a food name because the enemy team always thinks you're tasty and wants to, to give it a try, and it usually involves low health bars for, on your side. As Cassia get having to run out, disconnecting from the fight, like he disconnected from the game early on, tr uh, just no health bar left to speak of, trying to get some harass on the objective and just getting bullied out by a die for vision. Yeah, the, the double support taco is really paying dividends. They don't even care that they're passing that bomb back and forth. Look at the health bars on Die for Vision are all so high. They just seemed like they were never really low. And did you well did you see that ruby that they picked up after the objective? There were so many potions there. Yeah, it was it was a three I think it was it might have even been a four man cube that, that hit. But it was just yeah, 
just health bars on health bars being restored for die for vision and while you're looking at the fight I can find uh yeah Deckard already has 12,000 yeah 12,000 healing done almost thir 13 now just the potions are insane and I, I pay attention to Atlas on this Uther. He's literally just running at whoever is there, smacking him bang with the E, and, and just teeing up that Kerrigan. Because even if the Uther goes down first from kind of YOLOing in there, he's just going to ghost heal. Like, the Uther, if you're going to lose somebody first, Uther's it's the Uther. guy, yeah. Uther's strong. Well, the strongest heal in the game is dead Uther. <laughs> exactly. uh, uh, un the strongest untalented heal in the game sure. is dead Uther. And a nice engage on the Sylvanas. Sylvanas just getting caught out. Oh, no. Uh, looks like she was waiting for that camp to respawn. Uh, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure it happened so fast. <laughs> uh, but it just goes down. And so Duraton's couch going to make a, a power move on to the enemy siege camp. Yeah, nice but job. they are of, seen. Yeah, nice job of Shamhat and Atlas kind of dispel that rotation to come in and just get out of there. No, no need to make that kind of isolated kill into something worse. No need to fight over the siege camp that's ultimately not really that big of a deal no not not at this point 2v1 push into top lane though and imperius already kind of struggling against sonia now 3v1 cassia making rotation up it looks like gonna help out sonia hey, it looks like dash revision's gonna back off and uh ector in chat doing all of the uh calculations for possible playoff scenarios based on this match uh the short version is though Whichever team wins will clinch a playoff spot. That is factually correct. Yeah. Ector doing a loon's work here for us. Or Akrat, Akrat's work? I don't know. So, big match. Big match. Oh, absolutely. Both teams playing for the playoffs. Both teams playing for pride. And, I mean, it's a game. So, both teams playing for fun, too, right? I would think. And and so far in the early going, it's uh, I'm going to give the little... Mini tip of the hat to die for vision. Even though the kills are equal and uh, structures are uh, slightly in favor of die for vision, it kind of just feels like they have a little more control over the game. Yeah, absolutely. As they are trying to take this enemy siege camp, but there's going to be a big old team fight. There goes the divine storm and the apoc and everything else. A sleep goes out. Doesn't look to be a very long sleep but a multi-stun from Kerrigan onto Diablo and Ana. Ana gonna fall because of that. And Sylvanas playing dangerous and uh, wow, just wow. Hands off keyboard for me. Yeah, well played by Die for Vision and the timing couldn't have been better uh, right before uh, the objective. Now they're gonna go ahead and push this bottom lane with Sylvanas, get some more structure damage. They do have a camp pushing in the mid. Sonya is gonna head top. Diablo does eat the Kerrigan combo, the Uther stun, the slow, the root, all of the stuff from Deckard and sent back to the Hall of Storms. Bottom fort going down and uh, Die for Vision really riding the momentum. Absolutely. Although I am disappointed by Die for Vision not playing to their namesake and I definitely want to see a little bit more of the face checking going on, but there's still plenty of game left. Now I will say in their defense, there is no Vision Tower on Infernal Shrines to die over. If this right, was Sky Temple, no, the no excuse. No excuse. Uh, you're right. You're right. Sonya caught out a little bit. Does get the unstoppable. Runs over a bunch of mini potions. Sylvanas and Kerrigan not here yet. So Die for Vision wisely backing up. Um, let's see if they play for 13 or they just go ahead and dive right in. Now it looks like they're just going to go in, Taco. 13 overrated. Here we go again. There goes the initiation, kind of all over the place. Kerrigan getting yeah, aggro. There's, there's the, the sleep. There's the APOC. Blue health bars down again. Captain Wedge is and low, and down he goes. Everything except for Phoenix gets blown, and clearly Phoenix was the key here. Now Phoenix comes out, but a little too late. Going to get two people down on Duraton's couch. Almost three. Cassia does make it. Uh, whew. That a really well played fight for a die for vision. Uh, as you, the uh, it looked like the sleep to counter the apoc kind of at the same time, so that there was no capitalization, and then the Sonya leak right on top to to just kind of ruin everybody's day, and they secure the objective. No big deal. Yeah, I, I don't see a way that Duraton's couch is, is breaking through this double support. They just the red health bars are just never low, man. 
Yeah, at this point, uh, I mean, so we need a really strong, honest sleep to set up a pick and then take a 5v4. And I think that's how the Durden's couch comes in back into this game. Maybe, but right now it's, uh, it is all die for vision. Ector pointing out that my mat caster math is incorrect. Die for vision can win this game and still not make the playoffs, so I will amend. Durton's well, couch will secure a playoff berth with a win, and Die for Vision needs to win this game if they are going to make the playoffs. Uh, lots of lots of destruction going on to the buildings. Uh, this is a frozen Punisher moving into this keep, and John Cena jumping on Lucha Diablo. John Cena trying to role play along as well. Kalthos goes out in the process. There's Cassia and Imperius, all but the old lady going down the deep six for for the four front, the four uh, heavy lifters on Duritan's couch. On do, a do they try to core call Taco? I think they are. Is this going to be a, like a 12 minute game? May, uh, it's a rough core call. It's level 15. The Punisher's about to go down. I think this is an overstay. I mean, to be fair, even if they wipe here, the death timers yeah. aren't that long. There's not going to be much that Duritan's couch will do with it. I don't mind kind of yeah. hitting that YOLO button and seeing what happens. Core is going down 35, now down to 20. Kerrigan Big the first IL, to fall, no. followed by Sil, but Core 6-5, six, six, five, five, wow. that's it. Game what number one. Holy moly. And 11 minutes. For it. That's a fast game. That was a fast Infernal Shrines. Uh, so it turns out Die for Vision playing like they want to get into the playoffs uh, mm -hmm. because that was a commanding game one. But look at look at the damage real quick. So uh, Kerrigan a little ahead of Cassia. Ke Kelthos commanding lead for, you know, the time frame 4,000 win, 34,000 is the highest damage. 4,000 is a big difference. Sure. So commanding lead over Sylvanas. Uh, the second place is goes it's half the difference between them and it goes to die for vision and then the bruise damage is about equal so which just goes to show you don't necessarily need all of the damage you need all of the effective damage well and I'm going to point another big number out to you Taco look the at the healing. Deckard Holy healing Deckard what? compared to Ana like Deckard by himself almost 2 to 1 um, Ana now part of that was um, the level discrepancy, right? Your your talents are more powerful, er ergo more healing. So that's part of that. Uh, but still, that is a big, big healing number for such a short game. Um, and then you kind of throw in the Uther healing <laughs> on top of it. That's right. a, that's a lot. To Anna's credit, Anna's credit, she says Anna. So to Anna's credit, the uh, part of her kit is healing negation which is also kind of a detriment here because that means that there was that much more possible healing sure. but because of the healing negation and the utility that anna brings her he her own actual healing is kind of suffers there uh unless played to there's the the skill cap is really high right so uh but the base level healing's gonna be a bit lower and also, when the when her team spends as much time dead as they did, that's time like she she can't heal up the damage when they get into the gift. So let's let's so, so I I think it's more of a reflection of Deckard than Anna. Sure, sure. Um, let let's let's jump into the head of uh, Duritan's couch here. Um, I think you can a little bit you can kind of hand wash the match a little bit. Hey man, we got outdrafted hard with that with that double support thing. Um, but you do have yeah. to consider your ban. So what is the linchpin to that? Do they ban the Uther and not worry about it? Is the Kerrigan north a ban? Does it have to be Decker that was played so well? I mean, you don't. You only have so many bans. So if you're Duritan's couch, what is the adjustment that you make? Um, so between the, the play, the, the healing numbers, the utility... Also, think about the love that Deckard has been getting from Blizzard the past couple of months. So, he uh, Deckard's just a really strong hero right now. And he was played so well that Deckard is worth a respect ban there. Unless you take into account the side bet and they're trying to play unique heroes. That is true. That is a good point. 
We expect to see entirely new team comps here for both teams in game number two. So it looks like um, this map was chosen by Duraton's Couch with Die for Vision uh, having first pick. Um, I, I'm kind of a fan of first pick, honestly. I, I prefer to have a little bit more control over the draft. I think especially after that kind of first game where there's a lot of heroes that you're trying to take out if you can, I think the first pick gives you a little bit more control over that. But Duraton's Couch is just going to go back to the OG battleground on Cursed Hollow and, and call it a day. So, I don't like first pick for the NGS format. And the reason why, I'm so glad you asked, is, um, <laughs> is because you have to have a particular pick in mind for it to, to be of any value. And mm -hmm. it's basically Joanna or ETC or your pocket freaking I don't or or the or the counter pick, the the snipe right. pick of like you take Deckard. You and take that, Deckard I, I was just gonna say that in this game that's it for me. Like if if it's I'm Duritan's couch, I first pick the Deckard and save myself a ban. But if you don't have that one pick, that's like this is the pick we have to have. Then having map having the map pick I think is so much more important because you can count first pick you get two picks before uh, to the one right sure uh, and and getting that map so it let I I think when you take first pick it has to be for a very specific hero otherwise it's the wasted first pick. Let's see here. Does did, did that come out? Totally like, makes perfect sense. Enough? No, no, no. Like so. I prefer first pick when I have a lot of heroes on the other side that I want to deny and want, want draft control. That's when I want it. Like, if there's nothing in particular on the other side, then then obviously, Matt. All right. I'm adjusting the camera just a little bit. That's all right. You're, you're, you're off, so you can adjust it all you want. Okay. So yeah. another ETC ban uh, for the second game in a row for Die for Vision. Uh, Duraton's couch now on the clock. Oh, you know what I should do? I should click that little one map point for Die for Vision and get them their point. Uh, do you ha do you have the map bands by any chance? I do not, because I'm a lazy okay. caster. And hey, that's fine. I don't run after that information. It's, it's just discussion fodder. That's how uh, I up my production value easy mode in playoffs, is I'll actually get the map ban information. <laughs> Rainer banned out for Durrits and Scouch. Oh, actually, I do. Sham Hat was nice enough to uh, to DM them to me. Here we go. Uh, what Duritin's, a champ. I know. Duritin's Couch won the coin toss and selected first pick. Uh, Die for Vision picked map. The bands, I don't know who banned what, but the map bands are Volskaya, Towers of Doom, Tomb of the Spider Queen, and Alterac Valley. Alterac Pass, whatever. Tomb, Alterac. Did you say Braxis? I'm sure you said Braxis. Uh, hold on. Let me bring it back up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now you're all good, buddy. Volskaya, Tomb, Towers, Alterac. Oh, Towers. Okay. So Falstad getting banned out this time for the boss control and the global on Cursed Hollow, which is a pretty big map. And so Duritin's Couch did pick the map because Die for Vision has first pick or someone made the lobby wrong. <laughs> One of those two. And there's the Deckard. Yep, they're they're not going to give that up, and I, I I think that's a good pick. Deckard's always solid right now. Oh, absolutely. I I love him as a healer. He's so fun to play, and he's so impactful. And also, when you make plays, I get or when I make plays, I get to yell, "I'm Deckard Payne," <laughs> and it's it's entertaining. So yeah, because that's what weird if you do you that find? when you're playing like Uther. Right. Yeah. Not a, not as not as cool. Uh oh, here comes the Paw Patrol with Gray Mane. And I was hoping for a Rhaegar to help make that that Paw Patrol. Yeah, Rhaegar is kind of kind of all over right now. Brightwing not as hotly contested, but uh, is that a still she's really solid? Fun. Yeah, it, I, I oh, wonder yeah. if that's a product of the side bet or Duraton's couch has something specific in mind or both. I want to see Brightwing, honestly. I want to see Brightwing go go bribe go invade siege camps like like a jerk, and then. Zoom, zoom on over with the uh, the 
But at level 13, you can like full heal, full heal Cho'Gall like twice. It's ridiculous. Um, but that's that's the dream, right? And I don't. I'm not saying I want to see a Cho'Gall. I don't want to see a Cho'Gall. But Chat. Like, I, I want to. I want to see a hyper utility Brightwing. Chat saying the honor of the bet has now been broken with a repeat hero. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, know. it's the most. It's the most unique picks, not. Not completely unique picks. So Durton's couch can still even it out. I suppose. All right. So Leeming banned out. Who's Die for Vision going to drop? Out. Who's it going to be? And as a side note, I very rarely cast this early, so mentally I'm thinking it's so much later than it really is. <laughs> I haven't I haven't done a live cast in a while. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I have potato internet right now. I do. I, yep. My streams. You can go back and watch. Uh, actually, it's probably gone by now. But uh, I've been having slideshow streams, so getting to cast is suit is. I'm happy for it. I had uh, what well, I was casting with Weenus one time is uh, Duraton's couch picks up uh, Jaina and Blaze. And Weenus was co-casting. I had the main uh, setup. And I had this kind of weird DC where the screen went black. So there was like no observer. So Weenus decided to go old-timey radio announcer voice and was just calling the match radio only with old-timey radio announcer. And it was excellent. Hey, that's what I did with my slideshow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just like trying to give more detailed positioning and things like that just i trying to help you hear what i see and sylvanas uh, also picked up again that's that's a lot of power picks on the side of die for vision honestly deckard Zool, kalthos sylve that's a lot of power was there picks. a snub for die for vision did darker black play last game i don't know could be i don't know what's going on i'm just here to talk about characters moving back and forth so really the thinking blade. about this last one. DLV! <laughs> <laughs> so that is oh, interesting. Uh, Hero pool increasing calls wedge. So the I, I like the Vikings. I think they're actually in a, in a good place right now. Um, having said that, there is a lot with it with a Sylve and like a Kalthos and a Zul. That's a lot of wave clear and a lot of map pressure that sometimes Vikings can struggle to deal with. So uh, really interested to see how this one plays out. With how, um, with how spread with how involved not involved, the objective is in the jungle and it takes a lot of time in the jungle sure so even with a little bit of struggle in the lane if the four man which i'm not sure how i feel about this four man gray main jaina is pretty strong but i don't know if they can stall very long blaze can let, fairly like, easily anything. he can do the oil and then the the fire right so blaze can do it a well, little bit but the well, rest I, of them I, really can't i don't really mean the uh I don't really mean so much interrupting the objective so much as I mean like taking up as much time as possible, not in lane. Fair does, enough. Does that make sense? It does. All okay. right. Sometimes, sometimes I speak in like lettuce instead of ground beef. So. <laughs> Game number two between Duraton's couch and Die for Vision. Goku on Blaze. Gohan on Jaina. Big egg roll on the gray main. Ace on Brightwing and Captain Wedge playing all three of those Vikings. And over on Die for Vision, we have Shamhat on Decker Payne, Sulfide on Kael'thas, Atlas on Zul, Mikael on Garrosh, and Darker Black on Sylvanas. So, uh, definitely going to be, definitely going to be a fun match. Really, really fun objective fights, and TLV always makes the game exciting because completely changes how the macro is played. Now, this, this was a little bit different. Typically, teams blunder into each other and crash mid lane, but both teams ran bottom like they knew the other were going to be there. And poor Gohan ate a toss from the Garrosh. Um, and we have our usual team brawl here in the bottom lane instead of the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of makes sense giving Zul the opportunity to double soak, although I think this map's too a big for that, to... I think. That's really hard to do on, on Cursed Hollow. And I think that's why Sylvanas went mid. Sure. 
Interesting call, keeping two Vikings mid instead of one in each lane for Globes. That Globe quest is really strong. Uh, and having that little extra presence in the team fight is interesting. But here comes Zul down to the mid lane to do something and then leave. Yeah, the uh, he tried to go for that flanking stun onto Kael'thas, but it did not work. And now they are going to try to do the double, double soak with the Zul. That, that's a lot of jungle to cover. And uh, w what would be good for Captain Wedge, if you can... Is you ideally try to interrupt him when he when he goes to mount up, dismount him, you know, on the rotations, uh, to to make that rotation as long as possible between the two lanes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and he doesn't have any kind of movement speed buff while mounted, like Malthiel would for double soaking. But his clear is way faster than Malthiel, so you know, t tomato potato on the uh, on the soaking. Uh, he's a strong pick, and his presence in the in the jungle will be really strong. I'm interested to see which ult he goes. Both very, very powerful. Yeah, uh, uh, Gohan also did a really nice job of keeping that chill on the Garrosh, making his engagements really difficult. Top Siege Giant secured by Greymane. Goku did a nice job of stalling out the Sylve for the mirror move on the bottom, and uh, Duratin's couch is slowly, oh so slowly, wearing down this bottom lane, but now one of the Vikings has appeared, and Vikings are now in each of the three lanes. Yeah, I I think that Siege Camp is kind of was picked up a little bit too early, although Vikings did take Mercenary Lord, so that gives that Siege Camp time to march while large, and uh, Greymane did just pick up that Bruiser Camp, but... It's kind of an early pick. It it doesn't it doesn't require Die for Vision to occupy themselves with that camp, even though it's right above the tribute for very much time. Whereas their siege camp getting picked up a little bit later uh, into a TLV, so also doesn't distract the team. But the timing I think Die for Vision had on the siege camp had, had that timing a little bit better. Yeah, I kind of wish Duraton's couch would have been up here as soon as it spawned because they're. Like you, if you're if you're Duratin's couch, you want this this spawn to take a long time, right? And and it didn't. That allows them to rotate to the other lanes. The longer that objective should have taken, regardless of who gets it, plays into Duratin's couch favor more. And it was like instantly capped. And then Bailog goes down his first blood. Wasn't able to get that that interrupt in time. Um, did that even register as first blood? Because he's not it didn't. A full There's no kill. no kills listed. <laughs> Yeah, a quarter kill going over to die for vision and no announcer call out. So first blood still on the table. I guess Vikings don't have blood in their veins. And we do get a big fight. Here comes the bright wing phase shift. Not and not going to get there in time. Still present, just trying to get that extra heal. And Blaze getting interrupted on the retreat. Going to go down as well. Two kills for die for vision, bringing the count to two and a quarter. Yeah, well, that two two and a turn. That was uh, Duratin's couch. They were trying to cut off that rotation, catch the heroes from uh, Die for Vision rotating. Eric goes down in one of the side lanes, and a rough start for Duratin's couch. This is really the objective or the tribute that you want to get on your side of the map in the defensive position. And I don't think there's any way Duratin's couch forces in. That is a second insta trib for Die for Vision. Zul kind of occupying that middle lane during that objective, but all of his couch there. Zul going to run off instead as the rest of his team rotates rotates up. Not really, or Duratin's couch not really going for a pick there, knowing that the team is right there to help out. But uh, kind of keep that lane present, saying we're not going to back down. We're, we're, we're still here to play. Uh, Captain Wedge almost or getting into double-digit health on Eric down in the bot lane. Now this is a really interesting call. This is curse point for Die for Vision. And Duratin's couch making the boss call. Their boss burn is going to be pretty darn good with that gray main. However, Garrosh has sniffed it out. His team is not here. Uh, but Duratin's couch Garrosh doesn't know that. that. He, he did see think... it now. Now he does, yeah. And that's a boss cap going into a curse because that's another instant curse. Eric going in for the interrupt gets tossed out instead. And... But it... Blaze interrupts. Eric goes down, but I think it was worth it to. Uh, I don't think take, it's going to matter. The They're just going to rechannel it. Uh -huh. Jaina interrupted this... it, but she's going to go down, Taco. I don't think Jaina gets out of this, does she? She does. Uh, plenty of health, uh, sort of. Uh, <laughs> plenty of health for a mage, because you only need one to live. And they're actually getting the stall while the boss is pushing. And a stun almost onto Garage. Garage does get out of it, but blue health bars are really low, so Kael'thas going to pick up the curse. And that actually probably works out a little bit better for them that it took 
longer while Dirtin Scouts are not able to push because that boss health getting worn down means less time that that uh, the bottom lane is trying to clear the boss and during the curse, which gives the bot lane more curse time. If that makes more effective curse time. Oh, Michael in trouble, did go in for the engage, but a pyro on top of the story time, a nice uh, call bunker drop there, but uh, Living Bomb will take down the Jaina in the end, and that is another kill for Die for Vision. Does the, bu the bunker serves as a stasis, right? So Jaina was able to get into the bunker with the Living Bomb, it doesn't go it off? Yeah, would have cleansed it out, yeah. Play again, coming out from TLV, but getting trapped by, or two of them trapped by the scroll. Not going to be able to follow up. Eric goes down. Garage does finish his quest, though. Yeah, the Duraton's couch is in a, in a rough spot again to the start of this game. They lost all three of those forts in the uh, first curse of the game. And you can check out the minimap, Taco. No question as to where Die for Vision is going right now, knowing that Duraton's couch has a lot of uh, cleanup to do. Right, but don't give it away yet. Don't don't tell anyone. Oh, well, I guess it cat's out of the bag there. Uh, <laughs> they do... They are wearing this boss down really quick. I, I didn't even look to see what build Sylvanas went. Overwhelming Affliction, so not going to get increased boss damage. And not for the level 4 either. But that's, that boss still goes down really fast. So both, both sides, even in level, <clears throat> courtesy of the Viking Soak. Uh-huh. Uh, Absolutely. But... Vikings keeping it even. But uh, Duraton's couch definitely on the back foot here and still have not been able to secure a kill in this game yet. Yeah, while this boss is walking down the top lane, I would like to point out there are two watchtowers here, and Die for Vision has yet to do that. Die for Vision. Eric does go down. No, but that's Balog. Vikings did steal the bottom siege, giant, siege camp there, so that was a... An interesting little oh, maneuver. Eric. Goku is split way out from his team. That is a really rough spot to be in. He does pop the uh, the armor and goes in, but then eats the boss stun and the throw from Garrosh. Does pop the bunker drop. Story time goes down, catches Goku, who's running for his life. A roots from the boss, catching two from Duraton's couch, but they are not giving up. They are able to defeat the boss. They are able not to die uh, and fend off the siege from Die for Vision. Definitely a really important live for Duraton's couch. I thought it was interesting. The phase shift was coming in on Blaze. Bunker drop interrupted the, the friendly phase shift. I don't know if that would have changed anything. I think that might have definitely... killed Brightwing if she would have phased in the middle of that hot mess, honestly. That was really yeah, dicey. She could have gotten in the bunker too, though, right? Yeah, I suppose. Would have been that's dicey. Two, that two flame streams go, going out. <laughs> So we have ESPN style updates coming in live. Ector telling us now, <laughs> I assume because of game results, now Duraton's Couch doesn't need to win the match to clinch. They actually only need to win a single map this set. So if Duraton's Couch manages to pull this out, they will be in the playoffs. First kill for Big Duraton's from Couch. Blade. Does Going finally. Out. Sylv Takes goes down. Gray Main goes down. This battle all over the place, Taco. Absolutely. A uh, really explosive start from Duraton's Couch to, for the engage, giving them what kind of looks like an advantage, but Vikings are now down all three of them as well as, as Greymane. But it was a really solid looking engage coming out of Blaze. There's the sleepy time onto the three remaining members of Duraton's Couch and lots of... Lots of yellow health bars. That's going to do it for Duraton's Couch. Die for Vision going to go ahead and get this next tribute. Blaze hanging around a little bit too long as well. I don't know if you saw that interaction there, but uh, Vikings used to play it again, and all three of them went on to Kael'thas. They actually almost killed him, and then all of them ate a Living Bomb and Combustion, and they all basically exploded. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, um, they almost got it, though. It was, it was a pretty close thing. Well, everybody knows that the, the only good-smelling Viking is one that's roasting over a fire. So the, KT definitely putting uh, put in that to work against the Vikings. You know, I tried to make it work. It didn't come out quite quite the way I was hoping it would. <laughs> so uh, about a full level lead now. 16 advantage for Die for Vision will be here any moment, and it looks like they're going to use that 16 for a boss invade. Taco, they catch Big Egg Roll hunting around. He is here tossed. Comes the taunted shift, though. the bright wing keeps him up and it's actually michael that's really low with uh Baylog? is that the is that the big viking in there Olaf. 
Olaf, Olaf is that's the it. tank. Balog is the sword thrower, and Eric Eric's is the, the fast one. Yes. Yeah, I like to call them the fast one, the fat one, and the other one. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. The boss does not get taken, though, so the counter invade was uh -oh. successful. Greymane does go down in a bunker drop just in time to avoid the scroll of ceiling, but not enough health to get through, and the minions take down Blaze. And it looks like uh, looks like we get a uh, another early push call coming out of Die for Vision, going into maybe the core. This keeps going to go down for sure. I mean, this is a uh, Sylv double Merc camp pushing mid with a huge wave and a catapult. Sylv does not have Merc Queen. I mean, even still, that's a lot of... I mean, look but, at the yeah. core. This thing is done. Oh, yeah, just melty. Melting like snow. And uh, that's a sweep for Die for Vision, which I do believe clinches them in the playoffs. Well, according to Hector, it doesn't clinch them in the playoffs. There's still all scenarios where they can not be in. But if I they... A sweep, I if, thought a sweep clinches because it was three points. There's a couple that are down below them that can catch them with tiebreakers, is my understanding. Um, okay. Maybe sure Hector, 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 correct us. Does a domination <laughs> by Die for Vision, does that clinch? Let us know our, our, our man in the field, Hector. Yep. Um... Overall, very powerful play coming from Die for Vision and played, I mean, the powerful play really done, done well. The, the execution, the coordination, I don't think they really overstepped at all. They did. They took some risky plays, but calculated risky plays. So uh, re really impressive. Durton's couch just kind of on the back foot the whole time. They they had some good engages. They had those opportunities. But the suppression from Deckard and then Kael'thas on top was just... It was just dominant. Yeah. And Diver really Vision looked plan. really good. They looked really good. Yeah, I mean, the, the stat page just kind of speaks for itself. Hector is telling us a domination does indeed get them in. A win, not necessarily, but a domination does. So, die for Vision clinching a playoff spot with the 2-0 domination over Duraton's couch. Um, speaking of player go home series, Taco, uh, my team has that at 8.30 tonight. Team training wheels versus Respect the Goose. Dep Ooh. Respect the Goose is actually playing a double header, so they're playing right now. Um, but depending on how the match right now goes, it is very, very likely the winner of that match will be will take the eighth seed. The loser goes home. So it's almost like an extra playoff round tonight. For your game for against For my respect team the against Respect the Goose. So uh, the question is, do you respect the Goose? Well, they named the team after me. I have to, right? <laughs> are you indeed the Goose? Because you're Mongoose, but are you the Goose? Uh, no, they have a Goose named Honk. I just tell people they named the team after uh, me. I know in their hearts they did, but they haven't admitted it yet. I have a friend who uh, that was that I was in uh, training with that his name everywhere is Goose and his uh, his Discord little tag or whatever like everywhere his like tagline is, is may I have some yonk so that Nordic or whatever O with the there's a the J little, it's H -J -O. The they're called umlauts the little two dots no no it. not umlauts it's it's like the the like you, some people do a zero where they put the slash through it. Oh, 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 sure, it, sure, that, that, yeah. It's H J O N K, so it's yonk. <laughs> well, Taco, um, we're gonna call it an evening. We're actually gonna throw it over to uh, Andrew, who's casting my former team's Arconium League versus Team Tiny, and then Ooh. that's a double header for him because the second game of that double header is my team playing. So I'm gonna, we're gonna throw everybody over to the channel where. Uh, you can watch Mongoose flame out at the end of the season just before the playoffs again. <laughs> it's almost I guaranteed. I am. I, I have, have mastered the art of doing so. Uh, you'll do great. And uh, I'm super excited to have been here. Thanks for letting me cast with you. Sorry, I'm a little rusty, uh, but or a little a little moldy. Got to... <laughs> right. Moldy tacos? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, but definitely had a great time. Glad, glad to be here, and I'm definitely looking forward to the next few weeks. Hopefully, I'll get some playoff cast time. If not, well, hopefully, I get some internet. <laughs> yeah, the internet, hopefully more. 
All right, guys. Mm-hmm. Have a good night. Thanks, Taco, for joining me. I, I much enjoy casting with somebody as to solo. Uh, we're going to throw you over to some Sea East action here, followed by Sea West. Uh, enjoy the rest of the season, and uh, good luck in the playoffs next week. Have a good night. Night. <laughs>